Now, if I would like to disappear, say, the layer Beach 2 and Beach 1 from the timeline, but not from the composition panel, I would make them shy. Of course, they haven't disappeared, because these are switches that need to be turned on, so to speak, here at the layer level and also at the comp level. If you notice, layers 2 and 3 disappeared, and I can see only layers 1 and 4. However, I see all of the layers here in the composition panel. I can even click and drag them and modify them however I wish, except I don't see them here in the timeline. If you would like to see these layers again, go ahead and deselect the Shy Layer option, and there you go. There they are again. The next switch, it's very confusing for some people. If you hover with your mouse on top of this particular switch, it's just going to say Collapse Transformations and Continuously Rasterize, which is enough to make you want to scratch your head. Not only that, but it's not available for any of these layers. Let's talk a little bit about what this is all about. Go to your project panel and double-click in an empty space here. Navigate to your Chapter 02 folder and choose the file called Mountains. AI. Click Open, choose Footage, choose the layer, in this case, Flower 2. Make sure that the footage dimensions read Layer Size and click OK. Drag Flower 2 to the composition and there it is. Flower 2 is an Illustrator file, which happens to be a vector file. One of the benefits of vector files is that you can scale them to whatever size you want and they will never lose resolution because they're not made out of pixels. For more on that later, press the letter S for scale and increase the scale of this particular flower a lot. Notice how we're losing resolution around the flower. If this is a vector image, this should not happen, but it is happening. Now, click on the Continuously Rasterize icon, and there you go. It's now sharp again. What is happening is this. After Effects needs to rasterize this particular file so that we can see it, but when we resize it, it doesn't go back to the original to resize the vector file. It actually resizes the pixels. And we all know what happens when we resize pixels. They become larger and the image starts becoming blurred. That is what happens when you deselect the continuously rasterize. There's a big difference between this blurry image and this sharp one. So when you're working with vector images such as this flower, it is a good idea to continuously rasterize. The other part of the switch refers to collapse transformations. So let's talk about that a little bit. Go to the project panel and create a new composition. Use the preset for DV and let's make it a duration of 5 seconds. 500 should do it and press either enter or click OK and there you go. Drag flower 2 to this composition and there it is. Zoom out by using either your mouse scroll wheel or the period or the comma key, which zoom in and out. With the layer selected, press the letter P for position. To the left of the word position, there's a little stopwatch icon. Go ahead and click on it. And now move the flower out of the screen by about half. There you go. Something like that. Move in time to about one second. Move the flower down until part of it disappears. Move to about the two second mark. Move the flower to the right until about half of it disappears. Move to the three second mark and move it down like so. There you go. Let's separate these keyframes a little bit more. Something like that. And let's RAM preview this, zero on the numeric keypad. And there you go. Press the space bar to stop it. 
go back to the beach one composition and drag composition one to this composition, the beach one composition. Let me go ahead and select layer two and delete it so that we can see this better. And let me solo the layer called comp one. Select it, press S for scale, and lower the scale until about 30% or so, and RAM preview it, zero on the numeric keypad. Notice that where originally the flower disappears because of the viewable area of the original composition, it also disappears in here. Select the Collapse Transformation switch and now you will see the entire flower. Doesn't matter whether it was inside or outside the viewable area of its original composition. This particular clip, the Collapse Transformations and Continuously Rasterize, is a very interesting switch and misunderstood by most people. Hopefully now you have a much better grasp of it. Go ahead and click on that layer and delete it. There you go, we see all the other layers in there. The next switch refers to quality. This is a legacy switch, so we're not going to be changing that at all. The next switch refers to effects that may have been added to the layer. You can turn on and off all the effects assigned to a particular layer by just clicking in here. There are no effects on these layers, so this is not even available. The next switch is for frame blending. You can choose frame blending for any one of these layers. Frame blending refers to when we have frames that dissolve into one another or even pixel motion in which After Effects creates new frames to compensate for missing frames, for example, in the case of slow motion. More on that later. Motion blur to imitate the look of a camera shutter speed. Adjustment layers. Adjustment layers are a way to add an effect to many clips at the same time. For example, go to Layer, New, Solid, and click OK. Make sure that you select the Adjustment Layer switch, and the layer will disappear. This layer now becomes a placeholder for any effect that you may want to use. Go to the Effects and Presets panel and type in the word Emboss. Select the Emboss effect and drag it to that particular adjustment layer, and there you go. All of the clips underneath it get that same effect. Not only that, but you can adjust it, and it will adjust in all of the clips at the same time. Go ahead and click on that solid and delete it. You can delete it by pressing the Delete key. Select all of your layers. And let's use the very last switch, which is this little cube. What this switch does is that it turns the layer into a 3D layer, which means that we can now rotate and move in the Z axis. Go ahead and press the letter R for rotation, and let's scrub the Y rotation of all of the layers at the same time. As you can see, these are now After Effects 3D layers. Let's go ahead and collapse these layers. There you go. The next column refers to parenting. We will go over that a little bit later. There are some other switches up here. These turn the switches on at the composition level. We already saw the shy layer, frame blending, motion blur. These need to be turned on at both places, layer level and composition level. This refers to Brainstorm, more on that later, and this to the Graph Editor, also more on that a little bit later. This is the Time Ruler part of the timeline. This indicates when things are occurring. In other words, notice that the ruler is measuring increments of time. Lastly, there is this gray bar up here. This is the Work Area bar. If we RAM preview something, if we render something out, we have the opportunity to just do part of it. This part is determined by the work area. To set the beginning of the work area, place the CTI, or current time indicator, where you would like for the work area to start, and press the letter B. 
By the same token, place the CTI where you would like for the work area bar to end and press the letter N. If you press 0 on the numeric keypad to do a RAM preview, only the part that is inside of the work area bar will be rendered. To zoom in and out of the timeline, use the plus and the minus keys. You can also use this little sliding bar here, in which if you slide it to the right, you zoom in. If you slide it to the left, you're zooming out.